Hi developers, I'm Hussein Amdillahi, Microsoft MVP. So developing a good mobile application requires thinking about two aspects, the maintainability and the extensibility of your application. For the extensibility, we should think about how much easy it is to add a functionality to your application. That means how much easy I can add new uh, code inside my application and how much easier I can add new methods and new uh, classes inside uh, my application. And the second aspect is the maintainability. The maintainability means how much easier I can unit test my application. As you know, writing unit tests is really required and is almost a must-have for, uh, for uh, the good quality uh, applications nowadays. To achieve these two aspects, we can use design patterns. Fortunately, there is some good design patterns that are um, good to use with Xamarin Forms applications. The most known one is MVVM design patterns. MVVM stands for Model View View Models. And the MVVM design pattern could solve the issues about maintainability and extensibility by separating the user the UI code from the business logic code. And by doing that, we'll have an application that uh, is easy to uh, maintain and easy to uh, extend. So in this video, we'll learn how we can implement a VVM design pattern in our Xamarin Forms application. So I go here inside my uh, Visual Studio and here first thing to learn is that um, MVVM is a design pattern that um, organizes how your code is, orga is, um, uh, is organized in inside your uh, solution or inside your project. And with MVVM, as with uh, MVC architecture, we have three layers of code. The first one is the models, and the models is the folder or is um, the place where you put your, your models and your uh, entities. Then we'll have the view models. The view models will use these uh, models and will add some uh, business logic code to operate or to um, to use these uh, models to bind them to the user interface. The user interface will have a separate folder that's the views. So I hope that um, uh, the flow is um, um, is clear for you. So we'll have the models folder, then we'll have the view models, then we'll have the views. So let's start by creating these um, folders. So I go here to my uh, portable project, right click and select add new folder. Let's call it the models folder. So let's add a class here. And let's call it employee. So let's imagine here I'm used, I want to implement uh, a directory for employees. Inside this directory, I can uh, show all the list of my employees and I can then uh, add, delete, or edit any uh, employee inside my uh, directory. So I go and call it employee. The public employee class will have two properties. The first one of type string, which will be the name of the employee. And the second one is also of type string, but this time it's the department where uh, the employee is working. Here 
you notice here we use it uh, properties not attributes or not uh, uh, fields why because it's required to use properties to bind this property in um, in the views later so now let's add the view models folder and I'll add the first view model I'll call it main view model again it's a public class and inside my view model I use the employee um, entity for that I'll go and create a list of employees remember the application we are creating is a directory for uh, employees so here I'll go and create the list for the employees let's call it employees uh, list okay so now um, this list of employees is empty to add data to it I'll go and add the new folder I call it um, services inside this services folder I add the new class and call it data services or employees services this public class will be responsible for uh, getting and creating employees so it has a method that returns a list of employees let's import that namespace this method will be named get employees And inside this class, it depends on which you are storing these employees uh, in a SQLite uh, database uh, locally in your phone or you are storing them on um, a web service. So for the sake of this uh, demo, we'll return a, a basic list or a static list here and we will be dealing with the SQL, SQLite database and the web services uh, in, um, in the next videos so here let's create the list let's say it's a list of employees and inside that list I'll add some employees here each employee has the name and department so let's say here it's marketing so now that we have created that list let's return it return list so our employee services have a list and it will return that list by invoking the method get employees we'll use that this method to feed this employees list inside my view model here and I'll do that inside my constructor so I'll go and create a constructor uh, so you see here I have I use um, a shortcut or um, a snippet so to generate the constructor I just type C T O R so you, you, you get this out of the box inside Visual Studio so you type C T O R 
then you type type or enter this way it will generate the constructor for you so inside the, this constructor I will go and create uh, an employees services instance equal new employees services and here as I am using a resharper it adds um, the namespace automatically for me we'll use this employee services to feed the employees list for here I'll go and say employees list equal employee services and then go and invoke the get employees method so this way my employees uh, list um, contains all the data from the uh, get employees list so now that we have implemented the uh, main view model there is some other thing that is important uh, to do which is to make the main view model inherits from i notify property change it this interface will enable me to refresh the interface the user interface and each time my employees list uh, changes its value so it's an interface so we should go and implement it again as I am using resharper I can go and click alt enter I will click inside um, this icon here and select implement I notify property change it by selecting this option I get this um, dialog and here I type no and what this have done it has uh, implemented the interface for me and added the missing members which are these two uh, line these two um, uh, things here so it adds this property this attribute and this method this method it is the one we use to refresh our user interface to tell it that uh, the property we are binding it has changed its value so go and change to the new value we'll use that here inside the employees list and to do that I'll give an, I should go and give an implementation to the get and the set to do that with the sharper I go and uh, select employees list then click on this icon here and tape to property with backing field what resharper have done here it added a backing field call it also employees list with the underscore and gave an implementation for my get and set using that um, uh, that uh, private field to this I will add a call to the on property change it the method as we said here it will um, notify the user interface each time the employees list have changed its value so changing the value could be done by invoking this set uh, method here so in each time I change the value give it a new value I'll go and call the on property change it to refresh the user interface so now we have the models which is the employee we have the main view the uh, view model which is the main view model here and now we'll add a folder called views as we said uh, MVVM stands for the models, views, and the view models. So here is our uh, views folder. 
And for the views folder, uh, we put in it our user interfaces, which are, in my case here, the main page. So I, by default here, uh, the main page is um, at the root of your uh, project. But to respect MVVM, we should go and place it inside our uh, views folder here. So now we'll go and bind this view to our view model. And the way to do that, actually there is a two, uh, two options to do that. Either you go to the constructor of the main page and select use a binding context and give it a new main uh, view model. Or you can go and select that from, uh, from uh, this content page, from the uh, XAML code. I'll go for the second option because with this option I'll get um, IntelliSense enabled when I uh, write my uh, code, when I bind to uh, properties inside that view model. So I'll go and remove that from here and instead I'll go and bind it here. So I'll go and um, write content page dot binding context and here I'll go and bind it to my main view model. To do that, first I need to um, add a reference to my, add a namespace to the view models folder or to the view models namespace actually. So my application is called Xamarin Demo, so I go and select this one, Xamarin Demo app dot view models. And here you notice that ReSharper adds this uh, assembly reference automatically for me. So I get this uh, namespace from my main view model namespace here. So because here I enabled my application Xamarin Demo app and the namespace in which resides the main view model is the view models. So you just go and copy this one and use it in this uh, area here. So now we have created the view models. Now to bind, um, to bind it in, with this content page, I'll go and use that view models. And here you notice that ReSharper automatically recognizes that um, there is a class called main view model inside that namespace. So with these lines of code, now my user interface recognizes every attribute or every property inside my main view model. My main view model contains a list of employees here. I want to, um, to um, show this list of employees in my user interface. For that, I'll go and get rid of this uh, default um, label here and I'll add instead a list of list view to show the employees. So as we saw in previous videos, inside the list views here I'll give it the items using the items source property and then I go and use binding and here you notice I get employees list inside uh, this context here. So this is one of the advantages of using binding context inside your 
uh, XAML code because here it recognizes I'm using the main view model. Remember when we tried to add the binding context um, inside the code behind here. So if you done if you do that, then you you won't get uh, IntelliSense enabled here. You won't get, for example, all the uh, the properties are inside the main view model. So this makes your life a little bit easier. So let's select that we want to bind that list view to the employees list. With that, there is another property you should um, set, which is has an even row. You should uh, tell it true. And now we'll go and create our uh, item template. We'll go and select data template. Inside that tem data template, we should use a view cell. And inside that view cell, I'll add a stack layout set its orientation to be um, horizontal. Inside this stack layout, I'll show the names and the departments of each of my employees. So let's start by um, showing their names. So let's bind. Um, each uh, employee to um, each name to this label. So I select that. I copy this um, label. But here I'll go and select the department instead of the name. So you see here again I get full intelligence enabled inside my XAML code. So this way, I have um, binded my main view model to my view, to my user interface. And inside this list view, I have binded the employees list so that I can um, uh, show the name and department of each of my employees. So now let's run this application and see it in action. So now you could see that my applications get this list of the employees and show them um, in each uh, platform. That's all using the MVVM design pattern here where we have the models, the view models and the views uh, folders each one contains um, special um, classes to work with that, um, that part of the application. So I hope this was good for you and thank you.